nice, big, compressed, vintage spring reverb. Hey guys, Andy Pickering here. Thought I would delve into an old song, which was a piano ballad, and it was released on Suitcase in the Back. Last track on the EP. So this is what the track sounds like, the finished track. My bed, I wish to sleep instead. Unsurprisingly, a very Beatlesque kind of piano ballad. I thought for this exercise, let's revisit another song that I've done before. I'm not recording anything new at the moment, and just focus on one type of effect, but done like a few different ways. So I'm going to go into the original session, done on the four track originally, then finished in the box. So I'm going to take the piano vocals an acoustic, nothing else, sack everything else off, uh, the bass, the drums, the mellotron, strings, like overdubs, all that, get rid of that, and build up five tracks on the eight track reel-to-reel, -reel, recorded from the, the source, dry, completely dry, into the reel-to-reel, -reel. and then I'm gonna have three spare tracks for reverb, a left reverb, a right reverb for the music, and a central reverb just for the vocals. So we're going to really just drench this in glorious spring reverb and yeah, hopefully we're going to create what was a sterile dry track into something that just sounds big, open and vintage. Okay, so let's have a look at the spring reverb unit that we're going to be using. It is a Vimona VSR 3.2 spring reverb. Vintage spring reverb actually. Add the word vintage in there, I'm sold. And it's their most basic model. They they make stereo models. They make uh, quite a lot of different things I've seen, um, which really quickly go up in price and have a lot of different features. This is very basic. It basically has an in and out, how much effect you want, and then the tone of the effect. And it also has an effect stop. You know, I'm going to be using it in conjunction with this EQ and the compression. I always like to compress reverb because you can just get it to last even longer and yeah so let's have a look now what we're going to have on the tape we have got the eight track and those five tracks are purposely planned with double track piano i've got one piano playing high stuff one piano playing low stuff i've got a mono vocal which is double track with backing vocals all on that track and then i've got a acoustic and another acoustic. I'm going to have three tracks of reverb, but let's just see what we've got on the tape. There's the two pianos. Dry vocals. And acoustics. I've just got this coming through on the sub mix at the moment. As it's just playing back what's on the tape, I'm not actually mixing. The vocals, you can hear the acoustics or just pianos. Cool, so we've got all the elements. Now let's start adding some reverbs. So now I've got it properly on the mixer. Such a simple desk where when you're tracking and listening to things back, it's a flip of a switch. 
just between monitor and submix. So it's absolutely great for that. So all the music, the pianos, which are panned, and the guitars, which are panned, is bussed to one and two, which is like an essentially a left and a right on my master bus. And individually, one at a time, I'm going to be taking a direct out of the bus, out of the back there, and then coming down here into my out of my patch bay. There's my direct out of my bus, and we're going into the EQ, which I'm equalizing the signal. So I'm taking all the boominess out and boosting some of the more pleasing highs that you will get want to get out of a reverb rolling off the 20k sort of top end but trying to just get a nice smooth eq before we then hit the actual reverb which is set to a hundred percent effect so 100 percent wet and then we are compressing that here um basically trying to slam it as much as possible to make the reverb sound even bigger and then that is coming out of my compressor and into track seven. And we are recording. See a bit of compression going on there. So what's going to be super easy is that we have this on 7. All we need to do now is just do the other side and record it onto 8. So I'm going to swap my direct out from 1, bus 1, to bus 2. And then leave everything down here exactly the same. And literally go out of track 7 into track 8. And that's it, nothing else changes. We just do that again. That is down. So now we have the left and the right reverb. Flip into monitor. We have our track coming through. Now we have our reverbs here that I'll bring in. Real nice, big, compressed, vintage spring reverb. On uh, track three on the tape, I got a double trap vocal with the harmony all bounced onto one track okay so the you first thing always think about it. I will find a way. is I've sent it into my Revox there for I a delay like the roof is falling on my head while I'm and then that is coming out there and that is going into the EQ I keep needing to go out it's going out of the EQ the air, into the reverb the out of the reverb air. into the compressor matter, and then day. out of the compressor there's every reason to look past all these feelings out the window pane and into track one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we're all wired up now for this to be coming through onto track six. That is the reverb on its own. Blended with the dry. 
I keep walking but there's something sticking in my shoe Something holding like a Now we switch the tape head on, the delay head now we've got a delay, so the... It don't matter cause my soul keeps us singing on a party day. If you want to hear the delay dry... There's just every reason to pass all these feelings out the window. That's where this really comes into its own. So I can get the perfect blend between reverb and delay. Somewhere there. It's going to be lovely on the track. Absolute favourite part of all this is when you've got multiple tape machines going. It's great. And you've got that beautiful tape delay. Right, it's recorded down to the track. So we have our level set there and then our second level set there coming in. Then we have another level output there, set there. Then we have our EQ levels sent in to the reverb levels, they're set. Then the compressor levels, and then the final level is sent to track six. And now we're recording that. So let's go. I have notched the pitch up on this. I always wanted to notch the pitch up. Everything's pretty much set there. I'm going to mix it on to the Revox. Things are starting to get a little bit noisy in this track, but I'm just going with it. You know, you've got to think that the original pianos and vocals were recorded on the four track, but I couldn't retrieve those for this. I had to retrieve them from my digital files. So we've gone, you know, cassette, then we've gone on to eight track. So, you know, just bear with that things are starting to get quite noisy as there's three generations of tape that this has been recorded onto. The main star in this video is the Vimona Spring Reverb and I'm trying to show you the techniques that you can use in conjunction with other equipment to get the absolute most out of a single mono spring reverb in a production and the kind of things that you can do with it. So without further ado I'm going to hit play and you're going to hear the finished recording now that I'm going to patch into this video so enjoy I will find a way
song keeps us singing on a cloudy day There's every reason to look past all these feelings out the window pane I keep thinking about my own life counting down the years Chilling automatic tears Though my eyes not clear I keep walking but the sun Well, that turned out very nicely indeed. I mean, I really love the song, I Will Find A Way, which kind of always feeds into constant struggle of not really knowing what you're doing in life. And yeah, a bit of positivity in there, along with some pretty heavy, depressing lyrics. I like to mix the two. But anyway, yeah, it worked well. It's written as a piano ballad, you know, originally. I layered it up with a lot of production. Nice to strip it away and drench it in reverb. So I really hope you enjoyed the track. If you like my music, hit my Bandcamp up. Also, follow me on Instagram. Subscribe to this if you've not subscribed already. Uh, a quick welcome to anyone that might happen to catch this as the first video. Please check out all my other videos now. I think I've clocked up about 10 to date on similar recording breakdown things. So yeah, thank you very much for staying to the end. If you're listening to this now, you have done, and I'll see everyone soon, hopefully for another analog goodness video. Cheers, bye.